All right, well then we're gonna go ahead and get started with week 11, six, five, six, 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 seven, which will wrap up chapter six and then moving right into chapter 11 with just a little bit of a taste, which you guys hopefully will find refreshing because it is very, very simple stuff that we did in algebra one in high school, maybe even junior high for some of you, okay? So what I'm gonna start with is 6.5, we talked about logarithms and all the things that accompany them, but now we're gonna talk about how to rewrite a lot of these logs in different forms. So you can see here, I'm actually gonna start with a quick review for our rules of exponents. Because remember what I told you, what are logarithms? Just exponents in disguise. So just to refresh your memory, when we had y equals the log of x base b, that was equivalent to keeping my base, and in order to get rid of the log, we'd have to do the inverse, which means we reverse our input and output. So the base would still be there, but the x and the y are gonna flip flop. And so now I would have b to the y is equal to x. And remember this arrow goes both directions. We can take this exponential form and rewrite it in log, or more commonly, we take the log form and rewrite it in exponential. Okay, and one thing I want you to notice is that I'm telling you that this logarithm with a base of b and an argument of x, we call it, is equal to y. And if you notice when we rewrote it over here, what is the y? It's the exponent, which we said was equal to our log. So that's what I mean by logarithms are just exponents in disguise. So if we know what happens to exponents, when we are multiplying with common bases or dividing, or when we have an exponent raised to another exponent, if we know these big three, these three rules, then we can apply them to logarithms. And now we know the rules of logs as well, okay? Over here, there's a special few cases that I'll also add on, but this is a nice thing for your notes, okay? But I highlighted in gray here, the big three that we will use most commonly. And this one here is the one that is seen and used most often, which for you guys, you will be doing some of this in first semester calculus. So make sure that you understand this to the best of your ability, okay? So what is going to be true if I have something to a power times the same thing to a different power? Well, I'm definitely going to still have a bunch of Bs, right? But to what power? Well, if we're multiplying, you would think we would have more. And so the easiest thing to do is simply just take numbers and rewrite it. So for example, if I had two to the third times two to the fifth, I know that means two times two times two times two five times itself. And therefore, I have a bunch of twos, like we said, we would have, but how many of them? Well, how many here? Three, and how many here? Five. So altogether, I have how many twos multiplied together? Eight. Three plus five, which very good, is eight. Guys, I'd never want to do that again. Because if this was a 13 and this was a 25, I don't want to write it out 13 and 25 times. So we're looking for shortcuts. And the shortcut for us is saying that, well, notice the base did not change. The only thing that changed was how many we had. And you all know what the most common mistake is with students. What do you think they do with the three and the five? They multiply. Because that's what it says. But remember, Exponents mean this. Exponents mean this. And since they're all multiplied together, we can just add them and get that. And there's our shortcut. Okay? So that would be B to the X plus Y in general. So when we are multiplying with the same base, we add the exponents. And here's an easy way to show you why. Now I could do the same thing for this, the same thing for that, but again, you, should get, you guys should already know this 
All I'm trying to make sure is that if you know your exponent rules, then you also know your logarithms. So what's going to happen when I have a log and I have multiplication involved? Well, I can actually split them and say that I am adding them. Or go the other direction. When are we ever adding exponents? Which remember, that's all logarithms are in disguise. When we were multiplying. So remember, you can work this left to right or you can work it right to left. Either way. Going this way is called expanding. Going this way is called condensing. And do we prefer multiple logs? Or would you rather have just a single log? Definitely. Less is more in this case. Okay? We'd rather have only one log because then we can rewrite it and hopefully solve that equation. All right? So help me out. What do you think is going to happen when we're dividing? If when we were multiplying, we added the exponents, what are we going to do when we're dividing? Very good. Remember, the one thing that will not change is the base. That will be the same. But what do we subtract, Marcos? Is it the top minus the bottom or bottom or just whatever we want? Um, top minus the bottom. Same way we read. That's right. So we will take the base. Keep that and then top minus the bottom. So in this case, X minus Y. Which means if we're dealing with logs, when are we subtracting logs? Well, when they would have been dividing. You guys see the correlation there? Pretty simple. If you know these, then you know these. Now, like I said, the most important one, the one that we use the most, is when we have a power to a power. And do you guys remember what that means? If, for example, we had 2 to the 3rd, and that was raised to the 5th, that means I have whatever's inside of there five times. And what happens to be inside of there is the 2 cubed, or whatever. Which means I have a whole lot of what? Twos. How many? Well, remember, when we're multiplying, we did what with their exponents? Added. So, so I would actually have two, three times here, three times here, three. So I'd have three. How many times? 15. Oh. 15. A total of 15, but like Marco said, I'd have three how many times? Five. How many what? Five. Times. Five times, which means, guess what I'm going to do when I have a power to a power? I'm going to times, for lack of a better term, right? I'm going to multiply. And again, this is why. We'd have whatever's inside here this many times. But again, what's not going to change? This is a base. The base. Remember I told you guys, Megan Trainer had it right. It's all about that base. Okay? We will take and multiply when we have a power to a power. Now, what does that look like with logarithms? Because remember, logs are just exponents in disguise. Well, check it out, guys. It's kind of weird. Now, this in here can be on the inside or it can be on the outside. But since this log is a what in disguise? Exponential. An exponent. And I have this raised to the power. Then that means I have a situation where I have an exponent raised to an exponent, a power to a power. And what do we say we would do with the two exponents? Multiply. We multiply them, that's right. Which means, check this out. I could just take this in and just drop it down and say I got this times in. 
But then it kind of looks like this, doesn't it? So what they did to alleviate any confusion, and instead of these two, the arguments being multiplied together, it's this entire exponent multiplied times this entire log. They said, you know what, let's put it in front of the log so that you can see it is this times the log. Does that make sense? And remember guys, it can go left to right on every single one of these, or we can go right to left, which means if you ever have a number in front of your log, you can raise it up to the exponent like we have over here. Okay, this is the most commonly used one because when we have equations that we do not like, remember, we can do whatever we want as long as we do it equally. We can take the log of both sides with any base we want. And that will allow us to get what we want to know down out of the exponent. And then we can divide both sides via log. In order to get that y. Or whatever they want to call it out of the exponent. Okay, so just a few more things I wanted to make sure that everyone is aware of, and that is there are a few special cases, right? Remember we said our base had restrictions because of our whole exponential graphs that we did, right? Remember everything was above zero. So we have a special case where if we have the log of a one, with any base, again, greater than zero, not one. Then remember to rewrite this, we would just switch our inputs and outputs and get rid of the log. So I would say that this is equal to b to the zero equals one. And isn't that true? Anything to the zero power is one. So that's why this whole thing, when we have the log of one, has to be equal to zero. Now, if I wanted to know what this was equal to, I would take my base here, and I'd say my base to what power gives me my log, which is this b. And what power? Zero. Well, in this one, it was b to the first. We just didn't write it. Does that make sense? Which means this has to be a 1 as well because the bases are the same. Now it could be an X up there as well, like we have on this situation, right? If I wanted to rewrite this without the log, I'd keep my base, and then I'd switch the input and the output. And that's why whenever the bases are the same, we will just drop them and say my answer is this. Drop them, my answer is the power. Okay, so again, I'm talking about when the left side is all we have. What would it be equal to on the right side? My base to the zero would equal one. My base to the first would equal b. My base to the x would give me b to the x, whatever that is. Okay. So just as a quick example, if I gave you the log of, uh, let's say, 8 base 2, what's the answer to that? Anyone? Three. Very good, Emily. This is saying 2 to what power, remember that's what logs are, they're looking for the exponent, 2 to what power gives me 8? Emily said that in her head and said it was three. Now let me show you how I can use this to also come up with that answer, because I know I can rewrite this as the base. I can rewrite my eight as two to a power, right? Eight is the same as two to the third. And since the bases are the same, now I can just drop them and say my answer is three. That's what this is saying. Okay, so it's just a little shortcut. Could you still do what Emily did? Absolutely.
okay? And that goes for the same if we have a base and its exponent is a log with the same base. Then you can just drop those and say my answer again is x, as long as x is not negative. So if anything, number five is more so like an, like an extra step to get you to find out what it is. Like if you can't do it in your head. Exactly, exactly. And it's a way for us to do a shortcut without having to rewrite this like that and get the bases the same to drop them and concentrate on the exponents. We can just drop them right here and say that's our answer. Just a shortcut. That's right, Marcos. Okay, so that's all of 6.5. Now, obviously, you guys are going to have to do these things. You're going to have to take these and condense them down. Take these and condense them down or rewrite these in either way. And I'll let you guys do that in the group quiz, but I just wanted to make sure that you had all this for your notes, gave you a quick explanation of it, and shown you, hopefully you realize, you already know all three of these. Because you already know your exponent rules. At least you should. All right? So what will we do with these things? Expand. Write them in the larger pieces. Hopefully in simpler pieces, though. Condense. Take a big old nasty logarithm and condense it down into from three or four to just one. And we'll do that so that we can evaluate, simplify, and eventually solve equations with logs in them. Okay? Last thing in this section is called the change of base formula. What do you think we do in the change of base formula? Change the base. Antonio to the rescue. Very good. Excellent. They named this one perfectly. Okay. That's all we do. So if I gave you another one instead of the log of eight base two, and you were able to tell me, Emily, that the answer is three, what if I gave you the log of eight base five? Five to what power gives you eight? I don't know, but I do know five to the first is five and five to the second is 25. So it's somewhere between one and two. It's actually a heck of a lot closer to this one than it is that one, isn't it? So it's going to be a little bit more than one. But do me a favor, guys, if you don't have your calculator out, get it out. Pull it out, take a look at it. Do you guys see the logarithms on there? Do you see the two logarithms on there? Even if you have your phone, if it's a smartphone, okay, not one of those dumb ones, and you took it and you turned it this way, all the logarithms will come up on your calculator, okay? If it's horizontal, not vertical, it'll give you more options. Do you guys see the only two logs that are on there? L-O-G and L-N, which means what are the only bases that they allow us to do in our calculators? Ten. Ten is when it's just L-O-G and they don't write anything. And what is it when it's the natural log? E. Naturally. That's right. E. So if we have any other thing that we can't actually do, like this one, guess what we can do? We can take that base and rewrite it to anything we want. All you gotta do is take the top, log of m, and to get rid of that base, we divide by the log of that base. So do me a favor, Type that into your calculator. What is the log of 8 base 5 equivalent to? The log of what divided by the log of what? Who 
Very good. Log of eight divided by the log of what? Five. The base. And what base do I want to use? Ten. Or E. And if I don't write it, that is the most commonly used base in the world. It is base 10, so that's it. And Emily, I can see you working there because you're one of two people that are still on. And did you get the little more than one? I got um, 1.29202976.74. I told you it was a little more than one. Now, obviously, you have a little bit better approximation than my little more than one, which is why we need to be able to have this in our back pocket. Now, Emily, do me a favor. I chose base 10. This says I can choose any base, right? But we said that there's really only two bases that our calculator can do. So guess what I also want you to plug in? Do me a favor and do that. Because according to this, it says I can choose any base I want. And if I want the base of 10 or the base of E, I should be able to do that. And notice what I wrote. What should these all be? Equivalent, the same. And did you get the same thing, Em? Yeah. Told you. Pretty cool. All right. So just be careful with this. This is another thing that we can have, like I said, in our back pocket, if they ever want a what? Approximation. And Emily, what did you say it was? 1.2 something? 1.29202976. Two, two, That's good. Thank you. Right? If they want the exact answer, then you can write it like this, like this, or like that. Those are all equivalent. All right? So that is the first section for this week. What we're going to now do is utilize all those different tools that we just reviewed in either exponential or logarithmic form, and we're going to put them into equations so that we can solve for some unknown. And so there's basically two forms, right? Exponential. When I have an exponent on one side and an exponent on the other, I prefer to have the same base. Because what does this symbol right here mean? Equivalent. And what does that mean? Don't say equals. What does it mean to they're be the, equal? They're the same. Very good. Oh, so, yeah, they're the exact same. What's the same? Everything, right? That's what the world's about right now is being equivalent. It's a huge thing, equality, right? So I already know the nice thing is that the bases are the same. I already know that those are equal. What may not look the same right away are the exponents. But what do we know has to be true if this is true? That these also have to be the same. Now, of course, like Emily mentioned, are they always going to be the same? No. Case in point, look at my example down here. It's saying that these are equal. 5 to some power and 25 to some other power. But what do I know I can do with one of those? Change the base. Can I change what I have, Ricky? Um, five. Yeah, because 5 goes into 25, right? Good, but answer my question. Can I change what I have? 
Mm, yes, you can. No. No. And it's a trick question, right? But I can't change what I have, but I can change the way it looks. And what I mean by that, I cannot rewrite 25 as five but I can rewrite 25 as a different looking 25. That, like you said, could be written as five squared. So do you see what I mean by that question? Yeah. Can I change the 25? No, but can I change the way 25 looks? Yes. And remember we just reviewed when we have a power to a power, careful, what do we do with this? You multiply. And since there's more than one thing up there, I'm going to have to distribute. Distribute. That's right. So on the left side, I have 5 to the 2x. And on the right side, I now have 5 to the? 5 to the, oh, yeah. Um, and the 10, 4. Oh, wait. OK, so you only distribute the exponent. Why would I do anything else? Remember. The bases stay the base down there below, okay? The exponents, when I have a power to a power, we reviewed, we were going to multiply. Got it. And now I know that the left side has to be equal to the right side. And what do I already know is equivalent that I can just kind of forget about? The bases. So then I will drop the bases and rewrite this as an equation with one variable that we can then solve. So I'm going to just drop those and set the 2x equal to the 6x plus 4. And we should be able to solve that by now. Everybody good? Now, how do you know if you did this correct? How could you be 100% certain? And don't say plug it in and hit submit and see if it's right or wrong. If you're telling me that this is my solution, my answer, what does it mean? But that is the one and only thing that I could plug in for X to make this a true statement. So if you ever wanted to, you're like, ah, I don't know if that's right. You could always go back and plug it in everywhere you see an X and work it out to see if indeed that is a true statement. I don't expect you to, but you could. Okay. Everybody good with the exponential? Because guess what else we're going to also have? log equations, right? So we're also going to have a, they're calling it a one-to-one -one property for logarithms. Meaning if I have the log of S base B, and I'm telling you it's equal to the log of something else, T base B, what's already equal? What's already the same? The bases, which is the part of my log. So just like before, when we dropped those bases, now I'm teaching you guys how to drop logs. Okay, and I know it stinks, but we're going to deal with this. Okay. Dropping the logs now will allow me to take just their arguments and take and set those equivalent and hopefully be able to solve. Okay. Now, of course, that's only when we have a log of something with the base equals the log of something else with that base. If there's a number in front, can I just drop them and say now it's 2x equals y? No. Only, only when you have the log equals a log with the same base. Okay, so be careful with that. Because if I had two log x with some base equals 
the log of y with that same base, how could I get this by itself? How could I get rid of that too? Would put it be an exponent on the x, wouldn't you? Very good, Marcos. Anthony said divide, and you're right, Anthony, that would get rid of it from this side, but then it would just move it over here and make it look even worse. But like Marco said, we could take this and remember move it up here. So now I would have the log of x squared with my base equals the log of y with my base. And now do I have the log equals the log? Well then, and only then, could I drop them and say this squared is equal to that and then solve. So all that stuff I just reviewed with you in the previous section could come back into play just to get it to look like this so that we could drop the logs and set their arguments equal to one another. Okay? Every once in a while, you'll just have a log, just a single log in your equation, which is even better because remember at the very beginning we said, if there's a single log, what can I do? I can just rewrite it and now the log's gone. Okay? But when there's multiple logs, we wanna take and rewrite it as a single log. Rewrite it as a single log. So that we can hopefully have a log equals a log and drop them or just have a single log and be able to rewrite it in exponential and solve that. So if I gave you something like this, what scenario are we dealing with here? Is it a single log or multiple logs in this example? Multiple logs. Definitely. And are the logs by themselves? Is it just the log of something equals the log of something else? Yeah. Which means I can forget about the logs and their bases because they are the same. They're both a base of what? E. Don't be so scared, Richard. Very good. It's E, which means I can drop them and just take what? X squared equals 2X plus 3. And should we know how to solve that kind of equation by now? Yes. Absolutely. How? You're like I said, should. I don't know how, but we should. <laughs> Remember, if there's more than one x, like an x squared and an x like we have here, you got to get it set equal to what? You got a zero out of the equation. Very good. You're going to do a polynomial. That's right. So now I have x squared minus 2x minus 3 all equals zero. That's why we did some of the previous sections, to review and make sure that we could solve these. And now I'm going to take that and hope that I can factor this quadratic. If not, I have completing the square and the quadratic formula if I had to, which I'd rather not. And this one looks factorable, so I'm going to go ahead and try x and x. Signs have to be different to get a negative. And the only things that multiply to 3 are 1 and 3. And because it has to be a negative 2 that we're going to combine 2 in the middle. Whoa. Since we got a negative 3 that we're trying to multiply to get, I know I can put the 1 and the 3 in either spot, but the negative 2 in the middle means I got to put the 3 with the negative, 1 with the positive, and that will both multiply to negative 3 and then combine to a negative two, which means I have possibilities for my answers of negative one here would give me a zero and a positive three there. But don't forget our graph of logs. We had that vertical asymptote that ran through y-axis. 
we had the one zero as that point and if it was increasing versus decreasing we said all the x values had to be greater than zero and what did we come up with one of our answers being because remember we dropped the logs right and just concentrate on those things that's what we solved but this was originally for this which has logarithms so that means we got to go back and make sure that these work okay and by work okay i mean that we get an x value for our new forms of these logs because it's not just x here and x here it's an x squared and a 2x plus 3 I'm not gonna worry about the three and plug it in there and there. Because I know that this is all gonna be positive. But remember, we cannot have negative logs. And I'm worried about this one. But as I plug it in here, does it seem to work okay there? What's a negative one when I square it? Positive one. We're okay so far. What happens when I plug in the negative one here? But when we add three, what does it also come out? And as you can see, it is definitely a solution. Okay, so be careful whenever you see negatives with logarithmic equations, you gotta make sure that they end up being positive when you plug them in. Otherwise, can't do it. Okay, we can never get a negative from an exponent in a positive base to come out negative. So that's why we gotta be careful there. Everybody good so far? All right. Well then the last section of chapter six is modeling these. In other words, you guys aren't gonna like this. What does it mean by modeling? Graphing. We're going to model how we can use these things in the real world. And that means word problems. Okay. Whether that's graphically, as Richard noticed, I have down here, or trying to apply it to the real world applications. Hopefully, you guys recognize this formula. That equation is one that we've already discussed. It was the A equals P E to the RT. Remember that? Where they're just using the A sub zero as our original amount and the Y as the finishing amount. And instead of R being some interest rate that we were earning, they're now using K to represent the growth if it's positive, or decay if it's negative. Okay, so that's it with these. Remember, it's still gonna be an exponential, increasing or decreasing, depending on if K is negative or K is positive. All right? And you guys may have heard of this, especially if you're in any science classes or have taken one. And you remember a little thing called half-life. And all they did to find the K, that decay rate, and why is it decay? It's getting smaller, right? After so much time, it's gonna be half as big, okay? All they did was they put half of this equals our ending amount. Right? Or, you, for example, you could put 100 here and 50 there. But then all you would do is divide by 100, and you end up getting this to be 1 half equals e to the kt. And then they solved for the k, which meant what did they have to do? If we want our ending amount to be 1 half, and we have e to the kt, 
Well, they had to introduce logs. Sorry, Richard, is that what you're going to say? I was going to say to use the natural log, yeah. Yeah, very good. And not just any log, very good. Richard, why'd you choose the natural log? What base do we already have involved? E. So naturally, we're going to choose the natural log. But remember, to keep it equal, we got to do it to both sides. And remember that little trick we talked about? Since the base of the natural log is the same as our base of the function that we had, what can we do with those? We can just drop them and say that the right side is kt. And if I wanted to solve for the k, all I'd have to do is undo the multiplying. Which means what? Divide by T. And now we have K that would result in our half-life. So K is, e wait a minute. That looks way different than mine, doesn't it? Well, not really, how come? What did they do with the one half? They rewrote it as two to a power. And since this is to the first and I move it up, it would be two to the negative one. Aren't those equivalent? So if I wanted to rewrite this as the natural log of two to the negative one over T, remember what we said, Marcos reminded us when we have a power to a log, which is also an exponent, we could just bring it down in front, which is why they have it written like that. Okay. Or this either way. Right, but that only works for half-life. You can apply this equation to anything. It doesn't always have to be where this is half of my ending amount. Okay, we could be doubling. We could find how long it takes for your money to double if it was compounded continuously, things of that nature. So I'm not gonna do any examples of this, but you guys will run into problems that you're gonna to have to utilize specific equations along with logarithms or these exponentials in order to model using all the things that we've learned in this chapter six. Okay, so it's more just the applications, all right? So the last thing I wanted to go over before we get into our breakout rooms and work on these quizzes together is a little bit of algebra one. Now chapter 11 starts off really nice and then it gets pretty wonky. So if you guys have some extra time over spring break and you want to start looking at chapter 11 and want to work ahead a little bit, by all means do. Okay. But otherwise nice and easy for 11.1. .1. Hopefully you guys remember what a system of equations means. System of equations just means more than one. Okay, that's what they mean by system. Now we're gonna just start with two and we're gonna start with linear. Of course, we'll graduate from just lines to some of the other things that we've learned, parabolas, circles, things of that nature. And instead of just two variables, we'll go to three. And instead of three variables, if I have that, I then need three equations. If I have two variables, I need two equations. Because ultimately, we only know how to solve one equation with one variable. Solve for that x. So whether we start with three and three or two and two, we got to get it down to one and one so that we can then solve that one equation for the one unknown. And there are several different scenarios and there are several different ways to do that. So I'm just going to review that with you real quick and then we'll call it good for the lecture today. An independent system is what happens most of the time, okay? Independent meaning that I have one equation that is different than another. And remember, what we're looking for is a solution that works for both this orange and this blue equation. And can you guys see that one point that works for both? It's called the intersection point because all of these work 
for the orange equation. All of these work for the blue equation. But there is one and only one ordered pair, x comma y, that works for both. Now there are certain things that happen every once in a while, we call them special cases, where the blue line and the orange line are what? What one word is that called? Parallel. Very good. Parallel. Parallel. Excellent. And that means their what are the same? Um, their point or the distance from each other? Not necessarily. The slope? That's right. That's the word I'm looking for. Oh, slope. You're probably right about the distance being, but we, we're not going to be able to tell that. What we could tell is that in this equation and this equation, their slopes would be the same. But what would have to be different? The y-intercepts. The y-intercepts. And remember, what we're looking for is where it crosses from one to the other. And if they're parallel, what does that mean? They never touch. Which so means how many solutions would we get? None. Very good. They will never intersect, which means that is inconsistent with what we're expecting. Most lines are going to cross. But every once in a while, there's a special case where they don't. What if they had the same slope, but they also had the same y-intercept? Well, then they're the same line. And how many solutions would those have? True. No. Just that point and that point? Those are the only two? No. Multiple? If I slid this line over, and they were right on top of each other, now where do they intersect? Everywhere. Everywhere. But Marcos, be careful with that statement, because a lot of people say that, and then they say, oh, it's all real numbers. Anything works. Is that true? Mm -hmm. The only things that work are the things on these lines, which happen to overlap. Okay? So we call this a dependent system of equations because one line depends on the other. Yeah. Inconsistent because it's not consistent with what we thought would happen. And that is solving for that one X comma Y ordered pair that would work. Okay, so with these, they're going to want you to actually tell me what would I have to plug in for X to make it always work. And that would be that MX plus B, my Y value. So you're going to always put X comma whatever the Y is in terms of X. Okay. So I hope you guys remember the three techniques. One of them is doing exactly what I was just showing you, and that's graphing. But guys, <laughs> look at that ordered pair. Do you think you would have known that this point right here is 7 fifths comma negative 11 fifths? You guys aren't that good at drawers. You're not going to have it all sketched out, drawn to scale. So although we can graph geometrically to see what the answer is where they intersect, we're not going to do it. Okay? Even though this is the first one that we usually show so that you guys can see what we're finding, we're not going to do it. We're going to do it one of two ways algebraically. And hopefully you guys remember those two ways. It is called substitution and elimination, also known as the addition method. Do you guys remember those? I know. If you have two equations with two variables and you can solve for one of your variables in one of your equations, well, then you already know one of your answers, whether it's the Y or the X. All you're going to do is take either one of those two things and substitute it in for the other equation so that you get it down to one equation and one unknown. And once you find that actual value, then you can go back and plug it back in to find your other. Okay, remember, we're just trying to find that x comma y. That works for both equations.
where the elimination method is if you have a 2x plus 3y equals 7 and then a 2x minus 3y and again it doesn't have to be 2x equals 10 well then I know that this side is equal to this side on both equations so if I just added both left sides and both right sides then it should still be equal shouldn't it but that then allows me to take these five X's and those cancel out those Y's so I now have this and you see how I got it down to one equation with just one variable and now I can solve for that X and then take either one of these equations and plug that X in to find the Y. Okay, so that is the quick reminder of how to tackle any system of equations. Any questions on any of that before we break out into our rooms?